Hi guys, welcome back to Canadian Beer Journal. My name is Kevin. This will be entry number four and number three in our run on Russian Imperial Stouts. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Saint Ambois Bourbon Age Russian Imperial Stout. It's the 2013 edition. Um, but in local beer news first, we're having an interesting debate here in Ontario on the issue of privatization of beer sales. So for those of you that don't know, Ontario's beer retail is split between the Liquor Control Board of Ontario, which is fully government, their retail stores, and an association known as the Brewers Retail, uh, which operates out of stores called the Beer Store. Now, that institution has come under fire repeatedly from craft brewers. Um, it actually kind of necessitated the creation of the OCB, the Ontario Craft Brewer Society, who uh, do some really great mix packs and stuff and just local promotion for the smaller brewers. Anyhow, uh, we're on the verge of an election, and one of the big issues is actually privatizing liquor sales. And the beer store has come out with a statement saying that if beer sales were privatized in Ontario, prices would likely go up. Now, that's they're claiming that this is as a result of their study, which hasn't really been cited or released. Um, from what I can tell, it's basically that they've called a number of retailers in places like Calgary and confirmed that a 2-4 of Canadian is much higher than it is here. That said, from what I can tell, they've picked places where the cost of goods generally is fairly high. It doesn't really seem to be, you know, rigorous study in pre- and post-privatization. But be that as it may, I'm interested to hear what you guys think on the issue. Should it just be business as usual, split it between the Brewers Retail, which is owned primarily by large multinationals at this point now, like Molson Coors and Labatt, which is, I think, uh, part of Saab Miller. Or should it be fully government controlled, just run it all through the LCBO and just have, you know, professional staff who are not getting paid by what they sell, overseeing it, all that kind of stuff that uh, the LCBO purports to do better? Or should it be fully privatized? Um, would that create more access? Would that create problems? I'm interested to hear what you guys think. All right, so moving on to the beer that we're reviewing. It is the Saint Ambois Russian Imperial Stout. Uh, it is produced uh, as part of the Saint Ambois brand by McCausland Brewery, which are an independent brewery out of Montreal. They're actually one of the most successful, even though they're now under the ownership of another <laughs> independent microbrewery. The laws in Quebec are actually quite conducive to small independent brewers. Uh, that said, most of them tend to only do local distribution, or at least only province-wide distribution, but we are starting to see more and more come out and into Ontario and down into the States, and, um, improve, and just increasing their network. So I picked this one specifically because it hits two points that I talked about at the first Imperial Stout review video, and that is sort of the packaging and the barrel aging phenomena. So let's start with a bit about the beer itself. Um, it is 9.2%, so again, just a little bit higher than the last one. Not quite into what I would call monster beer territory, but a big beer, definitely. You wouldn't want to drink one of these and then go drive, probably. Uh, it's 84 IBUs, which is interesting. That's uh, quite hopped, actually. So uh, we'll see how that plays out. I remember the last review I did... I noticed that the bitterness kind of overwhelmed everything, but uh, it's possible that the bourbon aging kind of brought it back a bit. And this retails, I think this is around six bucks for uh, this particular bottle. Now, it's interesting in that packaging thing that I was talking about earlier, in that this would otherwise just be a normal 11.5 ounce bottle, but they presented it kind of like a single malt whiskey with a cigar to sort of style. The a very imperial Russian motif there. You know, it's nice. It's something you walk by and you just want to buy it and own it. Uh, let's get the lid off here. Oh, this opulent packaging sort of actually gets in the way of getting to the beer. Uh, there it is. Alrighty. So, let's crack it open, see what we think. Put a little bit of smoke in there. 
This one's still a little bit cool. I just got it out of, out of the cellar, so definitely going to give it time to warm up, being 9.2%. Most of these bigger beers really do get better uh, the more they warm up, start to get a better balance of flavors. But initially, let's uh, see what we got here. So on the nose, I'm getting a lot of fruits, like uh, dried fruits and cranberries, and I made some plums. A little bit of coffee in there, and maybe a bit of dark chocolate. And yeah, and definitely the vanilla note out of the bourbon barrel. For those of you that drink bourbon, you know that it uh, does have that sort of sweet, almost marshmallowy banana uh, vanilla note to it. And that's what gets imparted to these beers. And it's a really good balance because they tend to be quite malt-heavy, uh, quite bitter. So just add sort of a, another dimension to them. All right, well, let's give it a taste. Cheers. So, again, right up front, you do get a lot of that bitterness. But it's interesting, I'm not detecting a lot of the hops in it, actually. Um, I'm definitely getting a malt bitterness there, that sort of burnt, roasted flavor. But uh, a lot of the stuff that was in the nose is already being carried through, and that's pretty impressive given that this beer is still that cold. There's a lot of that sort of dried berry kind of maybe figs, fruit notes in there still. So I'm definitely going to leave this for probably about 15, 20 minutes if I can and get back to you once it's warmed up and we can really sort of tell where it's going. But... Thus far, I'm pretty impressed. And we're back. Uh, it's been about mm, 20 minutes or so. Beer is warmed up quite a bit and opened up into different flavors. What I'm really sensing now is sort of that thick malt backbone to it. It reminds me a lot of uh, hickory extract. Uh, sometimes people use it sort of like a substitute for coffee. It's like that, just sort of like a, almost a syrup. The bourbon notes are still definitely there, and they really do a good job of counterbalancing that sort of dark, bitter, almost oil-like characteristic. It's something kind of lighter and a bit fluffier and much more approachable. That said, this beer as it is, uh, being 9.2%, as you can see, it looks pretty much like motor oil in there. I wouldn't really call this a starter beer. If you're just getting into craft beers now... Um, start with maybe something a little bit lighter, maybe a porter, um, the Samuel Smith that I did initially, or if you're in Ontario, there's actually a really good Imperial Stout done by Wellington Brewery, it comes in a red can, it's just called like the Wellington Brewery, I think, Imperial Russian Stout, and that is about three bucks for a can, it's really, really good, it's really approachable, uh, and that's only about eight percent. So that will really introduce you to the Imperial Stout style without kind of scaring you off. Like I said, this is quite complex. It's quite thick. And I personally enjoy it a lot. But um, if you're brand new to it, maybe start with something a little bit lighter. So for an overall verdict on this, this is a really, really good beer. Uh, it's quite typical of the bourbon stout, having that kind of um, vanilla banana note in the background and a really big sort of thick malt heaviness to it. So I'm going to go with the 9. Uh, again, there's no objective fault to this beer. Um, I have had slightly better bourbon stouts. I'm thinking off the top of my head of Nickel Brooks, Old Kentucky Bastard. Um, Great Lakes Brewery did one a, couple, a while back. So, yeah, I mean, but those beers are like 10 bucks a bottle. This one is fairly accessible. And it's an extremely good beer, so if you see it, I would advise picking it up. And again, may like the Russian gun seller it out of here, see what you think then. But as it is, it's already an extremely good beer. I can only imagine it would get better. Alright guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.